Welcome to Somewhere Nerdy Radio. I am your host. I am Snarf Chris. I am Critter. And this is the Somewhere Nerdy Radio podcast. Go follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the normal things that we tell you to go re- go follow us on. That made sense. Sure. If you're listening to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all these other things, go leave us a review. That helps out the podcast immensely. Just be as positive as possible. Give all, give all the five stars, all the thumb likes, everything. everything you, just max it out. And even if you don't agree with it, that's fine. That's totally cool. Leave an honest review, but give us all the likes and everything you can. It actually doesn't hurt you at all. Yeah, to just do, that. do it. And then, like, give us, like, a hate hug, you know? Just like, hey, you know what? You guys could do this a little better. And honestly, we'll, we'll, we'll read it. We'll take it into consideration. I'll, I'll ignore it. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, it, if it's, con- if it's constructive, constructive. Yeah. It's never constructive. It's in the internet. Well, if it's if if they do give the five stars and then shit on us, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll at least take it into consideration. I'll try to make my voice deeper. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> Hello, baby. That's not deeper. It's just different <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and move into our is a, a a podcast i look forward to on our podcast on our what are we call in the season two volume volume two. two movie reviews i picked a movie critter picked a movie we both picked a movie for the other person to watch this time i think both of us haven't watched either one of these movies never yeah never so saw this it this is our first time we just we just just came out the gate just like I've never seen this movie watch it deal with it and we're gonna turn this in critter's gonna You'd be mad about it, but we're going to pick out... We're going to turn this into a competition, too. Who picked the best movie this time? We're going to call this our double feature. Oh, kind of yeah, a I like feature. that. I like that. I don't like the competition style, but yeah, yeah I like it. This yeah, is kind feature. of a double yeah. feature. Uh, yeah. We're both going to review a movie. We'll review the movie together, obviously. And then we're going to talk about that a little bit. So the first movie we reviewed was my movie, which is The Dead Video from 1987. Hidden inside the house at 21 Shady Lane Avenue is a black and white TV with the power to turn itself on and come alive with the dead. The video dead. But for the new owners, their first warning may be too late. Why did you kill her? You don't know what you're messing with. Video Dead, a new form and shape for zombie terror that invades a neighborhood and threatens the innocent, the unsuspecting, and the unbelieving. Nothing can prepare you. Nothing can save you. Nothing can stop the onslaught of the Video Dead. It's the late show to end them all. Look what's buried inside your TV. The video dead. We're going to go ahead and start off on the movie poster because this has a... It, well, that's what got me. Okay, yeah. I'll be honest with you. The, 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 the like... I saw the the poster. I was like, like I was scrolling through Paramount Plus. Mm-hmm. It was on Paramount Plus, and I was like, "What? What? That looks kind of cool. That's kind of cool." And then I read the review, like, uh, not the review, the synopsis, and I was like, "Oh, that sounds kind of cool." So, what is the synopsis? Well, I- I'm paraphrasing because I have nothing in front of me. But if I had to break it down in my own words, it's there's a cursed TV. The ring it possesses areas, and you have to deal with the repercussions of solving the problem of these evil entities that get out of the demonized TV. So, in the most layman terms, is a the ring, but a TV. Somebody gets delivered a TV. They get killed by said TV's creatures. Mm-hmm. Another family moves into the house. And doesn't know the TV's in their attic. Yeah, which how it got the attic, no one ever explained. Nobody ever explains. 
and then a group of zombies. I think five zombies. It's like five zombies. I think that's because that's all they can afford to make for this movie. And then they kill people. That's a the basic generalization of the movie. Okay, so the beginning. I mean, it's got good bones because if you think about it, it is the ring, but about a TV versus a videotape. Yes. So uh, the zombies come out of the TV, and I, when I say they come out of the TV, they come out. They of the literally TV. step out of the TV. They the TV falls on the ground. Zombies, which by the way, the, the first the zombie movie, you see is good. It looks really good. Yeah, it's got like that old school Romero zombie look with like blood kind of dropping down his face. It looks good. These are points on the movie where I'm like. Oh, wait, this movie might be good. It drops off pretty quick. It does drop off very quick. quick. I'm actually embarrassed. I'm actually embarrassed. I mean, like, it's not Meet the Feebles bad, but it's it's close. But it's close. It's kind of close. It's it's nowhere near. I will argue, and we're going to have this conversation a lot during this night with both movies. I didn't hate this movie. This is not one of those movies that I watched. I might have been bored at times because I don't think it's... There's a lot of in this movie where just nothing happened. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of exposition that's not explained. Uh, Like the guy in the TV, which seemed more important when the first, the, like the woman that came out of the TV in the very beginning with the kid who tried to seduce him. So, by the way, that kid. Uh, the that, worst what? fucking actor on the planet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kid was 16 years old. Okay. While he was filming in this movie where he made out was a... A, a grown, grown ass woman. So, yes. Yeah. 16 years old. It was his first job yep. he's ever had. And he got drove there by his acting director for high school. That's how he got the job. And then he made out was a, a grown ass woman. As she's topless. When, she is topless. I, I'm sure he bragged about that like forever. Anyway, there was a scene during that, like after that happened, like a guy killed her pulled her back into the tv killed her and then explained to the tv the situation and everything like that and that was kind of good but that guy never showed up again he was just no there's no point in that part of it at all that never carried on to another thing ever actually if they cut that movie out that part of the movie out it wouldn't it wouldn't have mattered the, the only thing is that I think they were trying to entice a 16-year-old guy uh, to, was smoking the pot. to pull a TV out of the attic. And yes. if you couldn't do it with a woman that was trying to seduce you, it's not going to be a zombie movie. I mean, like, a like like who's going to pull a movie, like, a TV out? Like, what's that noise in the attic that we don't know how it got to the attic? Because, I don't know, regardless, everything's stupid. This is, like, uh, doing a lot of research on this movie. They wrote, so there's, like... Like I said, there's like five or six normal zo- – no, th- there are five or six zombies in this movie. They all come out of the TV. There's like a bride. There is a like a James Dean like type character that was like kind of your old school. He was like a rockabilly. Yes, and he was blue. Um, so the first zombie looked great. Yes. And as they went along, they got worse looking. <laughs> That's what happened. But apparently on purpose. Um, So each one of those zombies had a backstory written for them. Mm-hmm. That was only told to that actor. You did so much research. No, I, I did, did a lot I did of research. Zero research after. This. I watched this movie. And I was like, I'm done with this movie. <laughs> <laughs> but go on. We're 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 gonna talk about what you just said a little bit later. So each one of the zombies got told their direction. Here's your backstory. None of that comes out in the movie. Like that's not an important part of the movie. Like you never watch this movie and go, I understand why that zombie's doing what it's doing ever. They don't explain that because there's a pinnacle scene at the end where it's like, hey, if you treat them like living people, they're like, oh, okay, we're living. We'll be cool. So she serves them beans. Yes. Right? It's not a it's not a thing. That's not a thing. It's not a at thing all. at all. But they were just they were cool with it. They were like, hey, yeah, let's eat some beans and be people. And they're like, yeah, yeah let's hell yeah, let's eat some beans. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> the more I think about it, I'm just so embarrassed. It's so dumb. So it's a, a TV that's inside these people's houses and when they just move into it, all the zombies come out. From the beginning of the movie, the original person that owns the TV, he gets killed. Three months later, these other people move into the house. 
The problem here is for three months, apparently nothing happens in this neighborhood. And these zombies are just walking around this forest wood area that's around yeah. the whole entire neighborhood. This new family moves into it. And it's this one kid, I think, named Jack, uh, moves into it. He's kind of a pot smoker with his sister. He's sitting there watching the TV that he finds in the attic after somebody that's in a cowboy hat comes and tells him for some strange reason, hey, I need that TV because this TV apparently was supposed to be delivered delivered to the occult society or whatever city they're living in sure just it, it's like a, a horrible acting all around <laughs> yes it's horrible acting all around but it's no different than like normal 70s zombie movie acting 80s whatever it is this whole entire movie got filmed on eighty thousand dollars that's the lowest budget even in the day is low it's lower than it, it may be one of the lower budget movies i've ever seen and honestly like i don't think that came through that it was super low budget like that i mean because i wouldn't put that up as one of the lowest budget movies i've seen I'm trying. I'm to, not saying it's good. I'm just I'm saying just it's trying <laughs> to think of a lower budget now. Yeah, no, that's super low. Like just doing more research on the movie. So eighty thousand dollars was really the cost of them filming this movie every other weekend, whenever they could get together. Can you imagine the makeup person that was just like, "Ugh, I'm just randomly gonna do five people zombie makeup full on." So one of the, the makeup designers was Rick Baker. Rick Baker is a famous makeup effects artist now. Mm -hmm. He's one of these people that worked on this movie for literally nothing. Okay. He is also one of the people that took hostage of, I think, 20 yards of film and took it and hid it somewhere because they weren't getting paid to do the movie. Mm. So they took all the film. They're like, hey, you know what? We're not going to give you this until you give me a fucking paycheck. Wow. Okay. So these people weren't getting paid. Mm -hmm. It's $80,000. Critter, I don't know if you understand what $80,000 for a movie is. Me and you can raise $80,000 to make a movie. It's probably not going to be a good movie at all. But mm -hmm. we can probably raise that amount of money to make a movie. This is kind of one of those movies that more people should talk about because of how bad it is. I agree. I agree. But it had some good elements. You know, like, first of all, the first zombie we saw. So whoever that makeup artist was, he probably, he probably like, blew the budget on the first zombie. And that's why, progressively, the zombies got worse and worse looking. One zombie looked great, and then he probably did the wedding zombie so next. They and then, wanted the zombies to be different. So I can what, understand which that. Which turns into what I was saying. They just looked. They had backstories for the zombies, so they wanted them all to kind of look Oh, yeah. It was different. apparent that the rockabilly wanted the girl. Yes. So the rockabilly. Had a crush on her. Was a zombie that died in the 50s. Of course. Which was very good looking before he died. Um, the zombie that, like, strangles the girl. He was a serial killer that strangled people and he got turned on by it that's why he smiles when he's strangling the person yeah but that's not apparent he's just like not some... at all this is all things the director has said after the movie was filmed mm -hmm. and shot it, done it was weird how much the zombies when when they so these were not brain-eating zombies but no, they no, look no, no. like them they yes. look george a romero zombies but they would kill people and then laugh as yeah, they there's killed. like full-blown they're just chuckling. laughing scenes like ha, 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 we're killing this person the bride ha, ha. zombie i think kills like 90 percent of the people in the movie no other zombie kills anybody other than the strangling thing no no the the zombie the 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 first zombie kills yes. people yes and then the bride kills most everybody else nobody else dies after that the this bride zombie kills everybody from like middle of the movie until the end mm -hmm. of the movie and you can't kill her no She's invincible. There's like a how she ends up dying is like there's a chainsaw scene that happens in a shed in the middle of the woods. And there's like a. She a, doesn't die from that. Yeah, the machete cut chops her head off. Yeah, she doesn't die from it. Picks Does her she, head up and she just walks around. Oh, she kind of does. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Because fine. these aren't zombies. This is TV zombies. <laughs> the video dead. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. All right. Well, all right, so look, I like I always want to do this with like any other kind of movie reviews. I want to pick my favorite line from the movie, and my favorite line from this entire movie is 
it happens early, and it's when April, uh, which is the one that's carrying the little dog at the beginning of the movie. She's mm-hmm. like babysitting a dog or something like that. And why this is my favorite line is because it's just a, I just want to be in the room when somebody writes this line. So I'm just going to read it word for word. You don't understand. He likes to chase skunks in the woods. And if he finds them, he tries to mate with them. Only skunks don't like to mate with poodles. They like to spray him. And then that really turns him on. That's an actual line from the fucking movie. I don't have a favorite line, and I will not participate in this favorite line <laughs> scenario. So, um, overall, it, this is one of those movies It's more of a dare movie than a movie that I think you should watch. So, that being said, again, please understand, uh, if you want to watch the movie, fantastic, do it. I, I And so you can understand the horrible thing that I put Snarf Chris through, and, and also myself, because it was absolutely terrible. But if you want to watch it, it's available on Paramount Plus, YouTube. Uh, yeah, it's on YouTube, so you can watch it pretty free. But don't pay money to watch this movie. <laughs> absolutely not. Do not pay anything to. But you know what? If you want to watch it and give your give your opinion of it and let us know, that's fantastic. But overall, I would not watch this again. So also something we also want to do. We've always done for someone nerdy dot com one to eleven. What is your ranking for this movie? Ooh, okay. So, I mean, it's close to meet the feeble range, but I do think it has some good elements that is portray- could be tr- portrayed in a good horror movie, and it has been since The Ring and a couple other things. So, I would give this movie a 3 out of 11. And I actually, I'm right there. Uh, right at a 3. Three and a half, if you twisted my arm, is this because I, I found parts of the movie enjoyable? It's It's fun to watch. But it's boring as fuck. There are Lots boring parts. It, it it drug on. It drug on. I mean, like, there was a point where it ended, and then there's 20 more minutes Yeah. of a movie. And you're like, so now it's a new movie. And you're like, oh, God, all right, here we go. 20 more minutes of this. All right, here we go. <laughs> we're both giving Good it Good twist ending, though. Yep. It's not bad. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the second movie or a double feature. And this is Snarf Chris's pick, and uh, I'm interested to see what people think about this one. And we're going to be talking about Flesh Gordon from 1974. Gentlemen, we are in big trouble. You've heard about it. You've read about it. Now, finally, you can see it. It will be a dangerous trip. And I don't know what we're likely to encounter out there. But someone has got to save the Earth from the treacherous clutches of that evil ray. Sure. Why not? We'll give it a try. Blast off with Flesh Gordon in his cosmic crusade against all evil. Witness the unbelievable, death-defying feats of that most remarkable superhero of them all, Flesh Gordon. Journey with Flesh Gordon through the dangerous outer reaches of intergalactic space as he joins forces with the mysterious Professor and the lovely Dale Arder to save the Earth from the incredible sex ray. It's so strange in here. Flesh, it almost looks alive. Flesh Gordon, the preposterous, be swept away to the dazzling heights of astonishment as you enter worlds unknown. I'm Prince Precious. Rightful heir to the throne of porno. Ah! What is it? The floor! It's opening! Join Flesh Gordon as the crafty Emperor Wang unleashes the forces of interstellar tyranny against him in a hundred mind-boggling adventures. <laughs> Flesh Gordon. Look! An outrageous parody of yesteryear's superhero. It's the eighth one of the world. Oh. Not to be confused with the original Flash Gordon. And if you are thinking, he said Flash Gordon, you're Not wrong. Flash Gordon. It is Flesh Gordon. It's Flesh and Gordon. the first thing he said, uh, he said to me was like, "Hey, my pick is Flesh Gordon." I'm like, Haha, "What is that? A porno version of Flash Gordon?" And he goes, yes. "Yeah." <laughs> this and, is- I, and by the way, I was not. Even still, not prepared. I was not prepared. Even though he legitimately said, yes, that is definitely what it is. I was like, 
Like in my brain, I I didn't contemplate it because I didn't think that'd be a thing. I didn't think it'd be a thing. So this is a hundred percent a porno spoof of Flash Gordon that's based off of the like the nineteen thirties Flash Gordon characters, and this is <laughs> like I'm gonna just go ahead and repeat the names of the characters that sure. it's based go off ahead. of. Flesh Gordon is obviously Flash Gordon. Uh, the main love interest in the movie is Dale Arbor. Dale Arbdor in the movie is Dale Arden, which that doesn't sound poor. Am I pronouncing that wrong? It's I always heard it was. It sounded like I. I thought they kept on saying Dale Earnhardt. It was weird, but go on. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the. Uh, we also have uh Emperor Wang. Emperor Wang, the perverted. Mm-hmm. And obviously, Flash Gordon. It's Ming the Ming uh, the Merciless. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have the scientist character from Flash Gordon in this movie is Jerkoff. Yep. Uh, and the, obviously, the other one is as Karloff. I think it's what the, his name was in that one. And then you have Prince Precious, and the original one is Prince Berlin. Mm-hmm. So uh, they live on the world porno. Mm-hmm. And the series, obviously, in Flash Gordon is Mongo. If you're familiar with Flash Gordon at all, everything is turned into a sexual innuendo. And those innuendos are not clever. They're not subtle. Let's back up a little bit. This is the movie poster, and we'll have this in the show notes page. Um, this has on the movie poster, not to be confused, was the original Flash Gordon. <laughs> I will say, when they started off with, like, a disclaimer about the movie about like hey this is what we're doing this, this not movie, to be affiliated with it this but this movie eh. does not start with a disclaimer this movie starts with an apology oh an okay. apology okay. about what you're about to watch they made an apo- I'm, i don't think i've ever watched a movie that starts with an apology that goes hey you're about to watch a movie you're not going to be okay with the movie you're about to watch this is what it's based off of, and I am very, very, very sorry you're about to watch this movie. That's how this movie starts. It was weird because, like, when it first started, it's like, this movie is rated X. I'm like, what the fuck? I've never seen that. Like, so, this movie is a rated X movie. There's a lot of nudity and, and hypersexuality in this. And this is... Uh, and by the way, this is like, uh, we probably wouldn't consider this X nowadays. This is X uh pre-1990 a lot of movies before pre-90 is rated x uh and then we can go down a list and uh, it's a lot of what you're you're listening to this movie in this podcast you know a lot of rated x movies Uh, original robocop rated x wow uh evil dead okay yep eddie murphy's raw okay is rated x okay dawn of the dead the original dawn of the dead really Oh, that one's surprising. Clockwork Orange is rated X. Clockwork Orange. All right. Well, that kind of makes sense. That one. That one's off-putting. It, there's so, a, it's yeah. off-putting things. So there's a lot of movies that are rated X predating it just being a porn rating. Yeah. So that I think that's kind of like the stigma. This one is pretty much porn. Um, it's softcore porn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. softcore. I mean, like, I've, there's not. Pin- it was definitely Skinamax. I'm trying to think of words that are rated on it. It's it's there's not penetration in this. No, movie. it's Skinamax. Yeah, it's, yeah, if yeah. you've ever seen Skinamax in the it's height about of the same level. Yeah, of that that that's what's happening. And this only because we have only to watch the version of it that didn't get seized by cop. Because there's another version of it that has a bunch of penetration on it. And then they went to court by it, and the courts destroyed lots of the penetration versions of this movie. Mm. Flesh Gordon that we're watching right now is an X-rated version. There's an R-rated version of it that was in the movie theaters. We're not watching that. We're watching the X-rated version because we're hardcore. Hated it. (laughs) Really? Oh, my God. I was so bored. (laughs) So this is where we're going to super disagree. I think this movie is... On the nose of understanding exactly what kind of movie it is. That's true. I would give it that. I would definitely give it that. It definitely knew what it was. And it played up to that point strongly. Strongly. Strongly, yeah. 
It had penis sources in it. Yep, penis sources and which was a stop and this motion. weird monster thing too. Oh, at the end of the movie, yeah, yeah which that had lots like the um, Clash of the Titans. You know, the Clash of the Titans, uh, um, Kraken, Kraken. Yes, but the thing is, it's like it did this really weird voice that I did not understand. Yeah, he kind of talked like your stereotypical nerd. You know, he was like just, in a stereotypical. No, no, no. It was like a guy that was super, like, just not uninterested yeah, yeah, at yeah. all. He's like, "Hey, you know what? I just kind of want to like, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing right here. I'm just kind of hanging out." So one of his lines literally was, and I'm I'm only repeating it because it was in the movie. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you're doing, but um, <clears throat> I like to see your tits. That's like a line from the movie. And by the way, it's I'm, a giant monster. It's a giant monster. Giant monster. He's holding the woman in his hand, and I'm not seeing any. He's of like, "Oh this. no, now I'm about to die." That's what he was like. Oh no, now I'm falling. Oh, and no. I'm saying a lot of this as a. This is a movie, a, a product of its time. In 1974, I was a little surprised at the amount of stuff that they did. I mean, there was so much skin in this, and um, actually, some of the special effects. I mean, like there's some Doctor Strange elements with the ring like person thing like happening but it's weird so it's such it's one of the weirdest movies i've ever seen in my entire life it's up there it's up there so there's bad and then there's just weird and this movie is weird even though like it knows what it is it's being a spoof it is weird it's weird it's more weird that uh as our we did on our last podcast it's like one of those movies i've literally never heard anybody mention this movie ever I've never heard of it at all, ever. I've heard of it. I, I think I got shown this movie in the early 90s from a friend. Um, there's also a sequel. That's not to- a friend. <laughs> <laughs> there's also a sequel to this movie. A sequel? Seriously? Flesh Gordon meets the like space cheerleaders or something like that. I think that's the name of it. I mean, they had space cheerleaders in this movie. There's a whole sequel based on that. It Ugh. came out like 13 years later. But this is a movie, strangely, it got filmed at almost $500,000, the whole entire movie. The budget was $500,000. I mean, like, it's, there's a lot going on in the movie. It was not. The special effects are, the special effects, the practical effects were just, you know. Like, the fact they took off in a a rocket shaped like a penis. Penis. There's a lot of, like, really good stop motion. Like, you're talking about the penisaurus. Penisauri. Yes. Penisauri. Yeah. I believe that's a um, plural term. What she fights, there is a like um uh, this bronze skeleton that he fights in the middle of the movie. That which seems looks out of really place. good. It seems out of place though. Yeah, but it didn't look terrible. And there's like this cracking thing that happens at the end of the movie. None of that matters because it was filmed on five hundred thousand dollars. It made almost six million dollars in the movie theaters. It's a good ROI. Yeah. So this is like one of those movies that was profitable. Interesting. I would not have expected that. In the 70s, a bad X-rated movie. I think it's right up there in line of I think I think things they got, people wanted to watch. I then. think they started spoof porno, and the other thing I think they started was the it stuck porno. It stuck? Yeah, remember when the the Pacey got stuck in her? They're trying to get out of her. <sighs> There is a whole yeah. There's like quite a few scenes that are uncomfortable. Yeah. No, there are multiple scenes that are uncomfortable in this movie. There is a p- nipple pasty that gets stuck. Oh no! Well, that's how they defeat the bad guys with nipple nipple pasties. Yeah, but my favorite thing is the doctor lifting a shirt to fight bad guys in this movie because he's wearing the nipple pasties, which I, are lasers apparently. Yes, I. That's literally my favorite part of the movie. It's so dumb. <laughs> It's such a dumb movie. You cannot watch it in mixed company. If you want to watch it, fantastic. But do not, like, hey, I, this is a good movie. We should watch it. They will not be your friend after this movie. I'm not saying this is a good movie at all. But they're at no point that I was bored during this movie. I was pretty bored. Really? Oh, yeah. I was watching it, and I was like, oh, it got to be almost over. And I checked it. I'm like, I'm only halfway through it. you got to be kidding me. It didn't help that, like, 70 minutes into the movie, you get an intermission. Right? I yeah. was like, intermission? I mean, like, we're done. You had, like, 20 minutes left in the movie. <laughs> it's like, we're done, man. What had, are we doing? They had intermission, which is just like a call back to, like, the old Flash Gordon movies and stuff like that. But most of the Flash Gordon, like, callbacks and, like, 
intermissions happen halfway through in the movie. Not right before it ends. Yeah, because that's called an intermission. Yes, it's called an intermission. All right, well, how would you rate this movie? All right, we gave Video Dead a three. Yep. I'm just going to go out on a limb and you're going to give me a bunch of shit about it. I enjoyed Flesh Gordon probably way more than I should have. Yep. So I'm going to give it a six. Ooh. No. Uh, yeah. It, it may be... It's not in my normal rotation of bad movies I just want to watch. But if somebody turns it on in front of me, I'm probably not going to be mad about it. Mm, I absolutely would be mad, but I would talk about it. I would talk about it for sure. You know what? I will give it. Um, it knew what it was doing. So it's purposely bad. It's most purposely of the time. bad. And the yeah, I mean, the special effects were OK. But you know what? I mean, I'm still going to give it a three. You're going to give it the same as Video Dead. Yep. I'm yep. totally disagreeing with you there. This is way more enjoyable than Video Dead. I don't know, man. I will never watch either one of those again. And I will so, watch. Video if someone Dead. put a gun to my head and like you pick one you want to watch, I'm like, kill me. This I is, don't care. This is the third time I've watched Video Dead because of this our, our review right now. This is the first time I've watched Flesh Gordon since the '90s, and I'll watch Flesh Gordon. Again. See, I will never watch either one of these movies ever again. Flesh Gordon has a sequel. We're a hundred percent doing that on the podcast eventually. I. <sighs> Shit. Just get prepare for that. Don't don't go follow us on Facebook, don't, Twitter, don't, Instagram. Don't, 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 go watch both these movies and no. let us know which movie you like best. My movie or Critter's movie. They're so, both bad. They're this both is... bad. Go follow uh, us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all your other social media websites. Podcast app. Go leave us some reviews. Leave us reviews everywhere so you can find us. Make sure you always give us the five stars thumbs up whatever the most is and then if you even if you don't like us just do that and then you can shit on us that's fine i mean leave a review like whatever you want to say that's fine we call it a hate hug just give us the five stars just do it just do yeah, it come on come on be it, a pal. it literally doesn't cost you anything be a pal like i mean it's literally like, free i mean like a one star like yeah that sucks but i mean i think it takes more effort for you to leave one star than it does five stars or it might take the same amount of effort you should might as well just or do you want to be creative and whatever we will be back on our next podcast we're gonna be doing a um why critters wrong i'm pretty sure <laughs> that's the name of the, that's the name of the podcast right Woo! that why, is the why, most you know why critters wrong? i've heard a lot of dumb things this podcast but that's the dumbest that's the, i give that a one <laughs> so next podcast will be why critters wrong and we'll be talking about what, Critter? Um, he, did, he, he doesn't even know what to say because well, he's wrong. <laughs> okay. Well, the, the, the theme of the show will be remakes, reboots, prequels, sequels, requels of everything to do with horror movies and why Snarf Chris is wrong. So join us on the next podcast for that. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this podcast. Let us know your comments about it. Watch both of these movies and let us know what you think about these movies. It, and if you don't, I mean, like, I totally understand. We have been your host. I am Snarf Chris. I'm Critter. And good journey, nerds. Good journey, nerds.